Hello KFC and welcome back to another Friday night at Kids for Christ. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you've all had a great week off school and tonight is our final night of the Easter series. Now boys and girls, I have some news for you because this may, it may, I don't know exactly yet, but it may be the final night of KFC completely, but I will keep you up to date depending on restrictions and what happens over the next few weeks. But keep an eye out on your emails, keep an eye out on Facebook and on the church announcements and we'll tell you what is planned ahead. So do keep a lesson out, but this may be our last night. But it has been such a joy to join with you in your homes every Friday night. And can you believe, boys and girls, we've been doing this now for a full six months. It seems like such a long, long time, but in some ways it's gone really quick as well. And you have all been so wonderful and it's been fantastic to see all of your videos and all of the photos that you have sent in um, over this past six months. Now, if you remember way back, we started off in the life of Daniel and we learned all those things and how we can be strong in the Lord. And that brought us up to our Christmas series, when we started and we learned all about the Lord Jesus as a little baby being born into this world. And that was the beginning of our series on the life of Christ. We continue Jesus's life and over this past couple of weeks and tonight, we're finishing up with the Easter series. And boys and girls, we have no better lesson to finish up on tonight than the one that we have to learn from God's word. So be excited because we really do have so much reason to celebrate this Easter time. Boys and girls, we're gonna start off and we're gonna pray and ask God to really help us tonight to learn about him. So let's all do our prayer drill together on the count of two, one, two. P-R-A-Y. Dear God, we thank you so much for another night at KFC. God, we thank you that you are such a wonderful God. We thank you that we can learn all about you from the Bible, Lord. And we thank you that as a church in Mays and Ballanderry and friends that are joining with us each week, we have been able to join on a Friday night in all of our homes together and learn about you. Father, we thank you that you have been with us. We thank you for all that you have taught us. And Lord, today on Good Friday, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you what Jesus did for us. And Lord, we praise you and thank you that you loved us so much that you did send Jesus into this world so that he could be our saviour. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to learn more about this tonight and what this means in Jesus' name. Amen. So boys and girls, I want you all to jump up on your feet because we have been doing our theme song right throughout this past couple of months. It is Jesus is the light of the world. So we're going to sing that now. So do the actions and be really enthusiastic as we sing this song together. Jesus. 
Jesus, wherever he will lead me, I'm going to follow Jesus all the way. I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he will lead me, I'm going to follow Jesus all the way. He is the light that breaks through the darkness, follow his lead and light it up. Well done everyone. I'm sure you know that song really, really well by now because we've done it every week and I hope that you have enjoyed it. Now over this past two weeks we've been doing the Easter story as I said and two weeks ago we learned all about the triumphal entry. Now what does that mean? What happened two weeks ago at the beginning of the Easter story? Shout it out. Well done. Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And the people were singing praises and they were shouting Hosanna, Hosanna. And that happened on Palm Sunday. And if you were listening into our church service just on Sunday past, we looked at that again in our kids talk. And then last week, boys and girls, we moved on in the story a little bit and we looked at three different parts of the Easter story. We then moved on to after the triumphal entry, we seen that Jesus went into the upper room and he had the last supper or the Passover meal with his disciples. From then we've learned that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed there to his Father God and he said, God, let your will be done, but if there is any other way, let it be. But Jesus knew what God's plan and what God's purpose was. And as Jesus prayed in the garden, as the disciples fell asleep on him, the soldiers came and they took Jesus away. And we finished up last week with Jesus on trial. Jesus had gone to Pilate. Pilate didn't see any fault in him. Then he went to Herod, back to Pilate, and we finished up with the people shouting, crucify him, crucify him. But you have been really busy this week and doing your wonderful crafts. And so I've got some photos that I'd love to show you now. So well done to everybody who was able to do their craft this week. If you remember, it was the praying hands in the Garden of Gethsemane as we thought about how Jesus prayed before he went on trial and we had a verse to learn as well so it's been lovely to hear some of your verses and to see it written in your craft so let's have a wee look at those now Wherever he will lead me, I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. I'm gonna follow Jesus wherever he will lead me. I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. He is the light that breaks through the darkness. Follow his lead and light it up. Jesus answered, I am a dry and a dove and a wife. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter John 14, 14 verse 6. Well done everybody. Again, it was so lovely to see those and see how you got on this week. So thank you for sending in your pictures. Now finally the Jewish leaders were happy. Pilate had given permission for Jesus to be crucified. At last Jesus would be out of their way. These cruel soldiers, these religious leaders in the crowd, they came, boys and girls, and they took the Lord Jesus away to be killed. It was such a sad day 
for everyone who loved the Lord Jesus and for the Lord Jesus because he was going to suffer so, so much. Let's have a wee look and see what happened. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Poor Jesus was beaten. He was made to carry this heavy, heavy cross. Boys and girls, just imagine how heavy this cross would have been. He was so weak. And Jesus stumbled and he fell. And a man called Simon was forced to carry his cross the rest of the way. The crowd moved towards this hill outside Jerusalem called Calvary. Let's all say that together after two. One, two, Calvary. Many of Jesus' friends probably didn't even know what was happening right at this moment because it was quite early in the morning. But soon the news spread and many, many of his friends joined the crowd. Boys and girls, how sad they were. They had loved this man. They had listened to his teachings. They had followed him. They had so hoped that he was the son of God. And now he was going to die. Jesus could have called on thousands of angels to come and to help him. But instead... Jesus willingly suffered on that cross. Boys and girls, because Jesus knew that he would have to suffer, that he would have to give himself up and die for sinners like you and like me. At last they arrived. The soldiers dug a hole in the ground on top of this hill so that the cross could go down into it. They stretched the Lord Jesus out onto this cross and they put nails into his hands and into his feet. Usually, boys and girls, as this would have been happening, people would have been screaming. But Jesus prayed. And he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. As Jesus hung on that cross, there were two other men who did deserve to die, one on either side of him. And one of the fields told him to save yourself. Why the other one said, we are the ones who deserve to die, not Jesus. He has done nothing wrong. We have. And the thief turned round to the Lord Jesus and he said to him, Lord, remember me when you come into the kingdom of God. Boys and girls, as Jesus hung in on that cross, although he was suffering so much pain and so much agony, he turned to this thief and he said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Boys and girls, what an amazing moment for this man who hung on the cross beside Jesus. You see, Jesus was dying on the cross for him, for his sin. Jesus was taking his place just like he was dying for your sin and for mine, just like he was taking our place. Jesus was the substitute. And on that cross, on that Good Friday, he paid the price that we boys and girls could never pay. And he took the punishment for all of sin. Boys and girls, that means that you and I will never, ever be punished for our sin if, if we are trusting in Jesus, if you are a Christian. Boys and girls, tell Jesus that you love him today. Tell Jesus that you want to thank him for dying for you. Thank him for what he did for you on that good Friday. That day today, many, many years ago, when Jesus died on the cross for you. In fact, thank him every day 
for what he did for you. The time on the cross, boys and girls, was passing really slowly. And the soldiers divided up his clothes and they drew lots, was just, which was just a bit like throwing a dice. But worse was still to happen. Because God was not going to allow this crowd of people to watch as his son suffered this awful death. And at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, this happened. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. There was complete darkness. Jesus was all alone. Even his father had left him at this time because Jesus was carrying our sin, the sin of the world. Boys and girls, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, listen to what it says. It says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So that means for he, for God made him, for God made Jesus, who knew no sin, who was completely perfect, to be sin for you and for me, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Boys and girls, that means so that you and I can become right with God. But the only way we can become right with God is through the Lord Jesus. Jesus had to die on this cross. And God had to turn away from his son in these hours because God could not have anything to do with our sin. Boys and girls, we will never fully understand just how much Jesus suffered in those three hours. But then Jesus cried out and he cried out and he said, my God, my God, why have you left me? His suffering was almost over. And knowing that he had suffered God's judgment for all of sin, he cried out in a loud voice, it is finished. Let's all cry that out together. After two, one, two, it is finished. All that had to be done for sin was finished. Jesus had done it perfectly. And at last, Jesus took his last breath and he died. Boys and girls, at that moment in the temple, something really strange happened. And one of the soldiers realized who he really was. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. This curtain in the temple was huge and it hung right in front of the place called the Holy of Holies. And once a year, the high priest would go in there with the blood of animals as a sacrifice for the sins of all of the people. Now this veil, boys and girls, that separated this area of the temple from all the rest of the temple was now completely torn in two. Right from the top to the bottom, this really thick curtain was torn in two. And all of a sudden, this really special place that only the priest could go into once a year was completely wide open. Boys and girls, this showed us that everyone could now come to God. The animal sacrifices were no longer needed. Jesus was the substitute forever. Do you remember, boys and girls, right back last week when we were thinking about the Passover and how the people, how God's people, the Jews, they put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their homes. And that meant that whenever the angel was to come past on that first Passover and kill the firstborn in the family, that the angel would pass over. Boys and girls, that lamb was the substitute for the young met boys in that family. Boys and girls, just like that is what that meant for us. Jesus would be the lamb, the lamb of God, who would come and be the substitute for you and for me. 
Now, boys and girls, this doesn't mean that absolutely every one of us will just go to be in heaven one day. But it does mean, boys and girls, that if you put your trust in Jesus, if you turn away from sin and trust in him, go God's way, then one day you will be in heaven forever. If you haven't done that, boys and girls, why don't you think about doing it tonight? Because that means you really can celebrate the true meaning of Easter. Boys and girls, one of the rulers of the Jews was a man called Joseph. Let's find out what he did. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. The soldiers checked that Jesus really was dead, boys and girls, and he was. And Joseph came and he took this body off the cross, Jesus' body, and he wrapped it up in linen cloths and he put some sweet smelling spices onto his body and he buried him. He buried the saviour of the world in a tomb. Boys and girls, this tomb was just like a big, large hole in the rocks and this huge, big stone was rolled in front of the opening. The leaders and the Jews were sure that this really was the end of Jesus. But they weren't going to take any chances because they knew that Jesus said that he would rise again in three days. And so they put guards on the tomb to make sure that the body wasn't taken away. I'm sure they thought to themselves, this is the easiest job we could ever have. All we have to do is make sure that Jesus' followers don't come and take the body so that they then could pretend that he was alive. But it was all very quiet in the garden until very early on Sunday morning. Before we find out what happened, boys and girls, let's sing together. So jump up on your feet. We haven't done this song in a very long time. I think it was possibly last Easter when we did this song. But we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. So 
Now let's get back to the story because the most exciting part is about to come. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. An angel had rolled the stone away from the tomb. These soldiers who were strong and brave and who guarded this tomb were terrified and they ran off to tell the religious leaders what had happened. Jesus' body was not there because Jesus was alive. God had raised him from the dead. He had the same body because he had the marks on his hands and his feet. But there was something so different about this body because he could leave the tomb before the stone was even rolled away. Jesus had a wonderful resurrection body which he would take back to heaven just as Jesus said he was raised on the third day. When the women arrived at the tomb early that Sunday morning, the tomb was open. Just imagine how they felt. They couldn't believe it. What was going on? And when, we, and when they seen the stone was rolled away, they hurried up to the tomb. Someone has taken his body, they thought. But the angel appeared and told them, don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. He is risen. He is alive. And then they remembered the things that Jesus had taught them. Boys and girls, you and I need to remember that Jesus is alive. Yes, on the Friday, Jesus died, but that wasn't the end of the story. The best was yet to come on that Sunday when Jesus did exactly what he told us he would do. If Jesus had not have died and rose again, boys and girls, we could not have had our sins forgiven. And the angel told the women to go quickly and tell the disciples. They were so excited and so full of joy as they ran off to tell them. And ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Meanwhile, boys and girls, Peter and John and Mary Magdalene were coming towards the tomb. And as they looked ahead and as they saw the tomb, they seen that the stone was rolled away. They saw the linen cloths and they seen that Jesus' body was not there. Boys and girls, at that moment, the, the Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter 20 and verse 8, that John believed his master really was alive. What a wonderful moment for John. And boys and girls, over 2,000 years later, Jesus is still alive and he will be forever and ever and ever. And because he is alive, we can get to know him more by learning about him. Just like we're doing now and have been doing at KFC by coming to church and hearing more about Jesus. By boys and girls, reading our Bibles for ourselves and by praying to him. Boys and girls, you can talk to him every day because he is with you. Yes, he's in heaven, but boys and girls, he is also with us no matter where we are. Boys and girls, he can be in your school, he's at your home, he's at the park, wherever you are. If you are trusting in Jesus, boys and girls, then God by his spirit is living inside of you. You can tell him your problems, tell him the things that make you sad and tell him all about the things that make you happy. Peter and John were so glad to see that empty tomb, but Mary Magdalene moved closer to the opening of the tomb. Boys and girls, she was crying. Who are you looking for? Two angels asked her. They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Just then, Mary turned around, and through her tears, she could see someone. And this someone asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary thought it was the gardener. 
And Mary said, If you have taken him away, please tell me where you have laid him. The man said, Mary. Who do you think it was, boys and girls? Yes, it was. It was Jesus. Master, she shouted. The Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene was the very first person to see the Lord Jesus after he had risen from the dead. Mary knew for sure that Jesus was alive and he told her to go and to tell his followers that he was going back to his father, back to heaven. And that, boys and girls, is where he is today. Mary Magdalene then told the disciples that he had risen. What a day it was for these women. Their sadness had turned into so much joy. Their fears had turned into faith. But the disciples, they were still a bit confused because they had not seen the Lord Jesus. But that evening, when the disciples were in a locked room, this happened. And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Suddenly, Jesus was there. Locked doors could not keep him out. And at first, the disciples were a bit afraid. But Jesus showed them his hands and his feet where the nails had marked him. Touch me and see, he said. And now the disciples knew that it was true. They were happier than they had ever been before. And Jesus talked with them and he helped them understand what God said in the Bible. He said that Jesus must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And now he told them, your job is to go and tell others. It would be their job to share this good news, this exciting news with everyone. And because they did, and because someone else told someone else, and because someone else continued to tell that story, boys and girls, today... Because of that and because of what we read in the Bible, boys and girls, we can know the best news of all. And so today is called Good Friday. And you may have often wondered, well, why is it called Good Friday? Surely the fact that Jesus died on the cross, that was not a good day when Jesus had to suffer so much pain and agony and die. But boys and girls, the reason why it really is a good day and why we should be praising and worshipping him is because of what he did was, this, was because he did it for you. Boys and girls, he took the punishment so that you and I wouldn't have to. And just as I said earlier, Good Friday was not the end of the story. Because we know that on Easter Sunday, three days later, and we'll celebrate that in two days time, the Lord Jesus was no longer dead. He had risen from the dead and he is in heaven forever. Boys and girls, trust in him today and every day because Jesus is alive. And that's exactly what we're going to sing about now.
on. Now this week boys and girls, if you go back into your Easter packs inside the Polly Pocket and the little craft bag that I gave you, you will see craft number three. And craft number three is this one here. It says on the top of it, he is risen and the date, which is today, Friday, the 2nd of April. So boys and girls, that's exactly what we've been learning all about tonight. How this wonderful Easter story is all about Jesus. Not just that Jesus died on the cross, but actually that he rose from the dead. Jesus is no longer on the cross. He is risen. And so what I want you to do is I need you to be very careful and maybe some of the younger ones can get a little bit of help with this. But I need you to cut out the cross and you can see that there's a very thick line here. Well, what you need to do is you need to cut out around the outside and the inside. So you need to cut out this part as well. And then if you've got some cling film at home, what you can do is you can lay your cross down on the cling film. And in your little bag, there's some tissue paper of lots of different colours. And you can tear up that tissue paper. And what I want you to do is get some PVA glue and stick all the different little bits of tissue paper on to make a really lovely and colourful cross. Just like if you can see down here in the bottom corner. So you're going to make a lovely cross. You're going to put some cling film back on the top again, leave it to dry. And then you can cut it out and stick it up on your window. It's like a bit like a stained glass window so that we can really see that Jesus is risen. So I hope you enjoy doing that craft this week. Now, boys and girls, you've also got your calendars and I hope you've been enjoying opening all the doors of your calendars. You've got two more days. If you haven't done today's yet, you've got today. You've also got tomorrow, Saturday, and then the final day is Easter Sunday. And so you've got your little devotional book and I hope you've been enjoying these as a family as you've continued to learn all about the Easter story from the garden to the curtain and finally to the cross. It's been so lovely to be chatting to some of you and hear how much you've really been enjoying this. So I'm so glad that as families you've been blessed through this and have enjoyed doing it together. Now boys and girls, we're going to sing one more song and then after that I've got a really special announcement for you. So let's sing all together. One, two, three, Jesus is alive. We did this one last Easter so you may recognise and remember it and then come back to me as I've one final announcement to make. So let's all sing one, two, three, Jesus is alive. <laughs> Jesus is alive. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. He died for you and me. But on day three, Jesus rose again. Jesus is alive. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. He died for you and me. But on day three. Jesus rose again, Jesus is alive God loved the world, so he gave his son Jesus is our friend, he loves everyone
Now, boys and girls, the final thing I need to tell you is that I have got one more challenge for you to do at Kids for Christ. So you're all off on your holidays this week and we've been learning all about the true meaning of Easter, how Jesus is not here, he is not dead, but he is risen and he is alive. And so your challenge this week, boys and girls, I want you to go outside and hopefully we'll get some nice sunshine that you can enjoy doing this outside. But if we don't and you have to do something inside, that's also no problem at all. But what I want you to do is I want you to create something in your garden to show us that Jesus is alive. So you can do whatever you want, but let me give you some ideas. Maybe you could create like a little resurrection garden where you have a little tomb with a stone rolled away, where you could have some crosses and Jesus not on the cross. Maybe you could just create a cross and have he is risen on it. Maybe you could paint some stones. Maybe you could lay something out along your garden like stones or some things that you have to say the words Jesus is alive. Maybe you have a small tree outside and you can decorate it with some things that remind you all of the Easter story of all the things that we have been learning together. Now, those are just some ideas, boys and girls. I know you have great imaginations and you're so creative and you'll be able to think of lots of different things. So what I want you to do is just create something that reminds us of the Easter story and about Jesus, the hero of our story, who is not dead, but is alive. And so if you can send in your pictures to me by this Friday, so if you've got a week to do it, send them in to me by Friday at four o'clock. And then after that, I will have a look through the photos. We will judge them. We will announce the winners through email. We will announce it on Facebook. And then I have prizes for the winners. So I hope you really get involved and enjoy doing that little family activity, the final little family activity at Kids for Christ. So get your thinking hats on and really enjoy doing that together. But boys and girls, we really have now come to the end of KFC. And as I said at the beginning, this may be our very last goodbye, which is a little bit sad. But boys and girls, it has been so wonderful to join with you and your families right throughout this past six months. And depending on what happens, what announcements the government make and PCI lay down for us, we will be able then to decide what happens next. So as I said, keep an eye on our Facebook to let you know the church emails and the church announcements because I will keep you updated through all of those channels. But for now, boys and girls, I really hope you enjoy your Easter holidays. I hope you enjoy eating your Easter eggs, but don't eat too many and remember, that when you open up your Easter eggs, that the egg inside is empty. And that really does remind us that Jesus is alive, that he has risen. And boys and girls, the whole point of what we've been trying to get across to you right throughout as we've been looking at the life of Christ, as we've studied the Easter story, is that Jesus wants to be your special friend. He wants to forgive you of your sin and he wants you to follow him every day of your life, to put your trust in him. So boys and girls, if you haven't put your trust in him, then can I really ask you today to really think about it, to think about why you haven't, and to really think about putting your trust in Jesus, turning away from sin, not going your own way to go on God's way, and then you can really celebrate this Easter, the true meaning of why Jesus came to this earth to die on the cross to be your saviour. Boys and girls, let's celebrate Jesus this Easter time. So boys and girls, it's goodbye for now, but I hope I'll see you all really, really soon. Again, thank you to all of our families, to all of you boys and girls who have made Kids for Christ possible over this past six months, and I'll keep you updated about what's to happen in the future. But for now, boys and girls, I'll see you soon. Bye.